The last set of videos introduced us to corporations and some accounting issues that are unique to corporations, such as the issuance of bonds payable or the issuance of common shares. This set of videos will look at the other side of those transactions, so the accounting of investments. The type of accounting that we are going to do depends on the investment that we're talking about. For example, the first thing we need to know is the corporation that's making the investment intends to hold the investment for how long? Typically, the question we ask is, does the business intend to hold the investment for less than a year? If the answer is yes, then we ask another question. Is the market price available? If the market price is available, then we will use something called the fair value method. If the market price is not available, we'll do what we've been doing all along up until this point, the historical cost method. Now, what if the business does not intend to hold it for less than a year? Or worded another way, what if the business intends to hold it for longer than a year? Well, then we have to look at the ownership percentage. Does the business own less than 20% of the shares of the company that they're buying shares in? If they own less than 20% and the market price is available, we will once again use the fair value method. If the market price is not available, we will use the historical cost method. If the business intends to buy an investment and they'll own between 20 to 50% of the shares, we will use something called the equity method of accounting. The equity method of accounting is something we'll cover in another video. If they own over 50% of the outstanding shares, we'll use consolidation. Now, consolidation is an issue that I usually don't cover in introductory accounting videos. Those are reserved for a more advanced accounting course. In this video, we're going to focus on the fair value method. And in a later video, we'll focus on the equity method. Let's take a look at an example. This is example 16-1. The background is Valley Ocean Inc. completed the following short-term investment transactions in 20x1 and 20x2. The required is for us to record the journal entries for each transaction below. On December 5th, purchase 2,000 shares of STI Limited for $35 a share, with the intention to sell the shares in the following year. The brokerage charged $250 for the transaction. Key pieces of information from this transaction, how much was purchased, and the fact that they intend to sell the shares within the following year. That means we are going to use the fair value method of accounting. We can begin by debiting the short term investments account for 2000 multiplied by $35 a share. which is $70,000. We should also record the brokerage expense of $250. And that means the cash outlay would be the sum of 70,000 plus 250 or $70,250. The next transaction is on December 17th, where a cash dividend of 70 cents a share was received. So we can debit cash for 2,000 shares and on each share, 70 cents was received. And we credit a new account called dividend revenue. At the end of the fiscal year, STI Limited shares had a market price of $38.50. Recall that the shares were initially purchased for $35 a share. Using the fair value method, the corporation needs to show the fair value of its short-term investments, in other words, the market value of its short-term investments on its balance sheet. The way to do that is we use a new account. It's called fair value valuation allowance. And this will be a companion account to our short-term investment account. 
we can take the 2,000 shares that we own. Take the market price of today and subtract the original price. That's the difference between today's market value, December 31st, compared to when the shares were originally bought. And then we credit another account called unrealized gain on short-term investment. On Feb 13th, the shares are sold for $37 at the time. The brokerage fees were $250. So we can debit cash for 2,000 multiplied by $37 a share. And then we subtract the brokerage fees of $250, which the brokerage would have retained. We debit the brokerage fees for $250. And then we credit our short-term investment account for the original amount, which you'll recall was 70,000. We also have to remove this fair value valuation allowance and then we should recognize any gain or loss. So in this case there will be a loss on sale of short term investment. We have $77,000 in credits and $74,000 in debits. The difference here would be 3,000. Now what I've just shown you is accounting standards for private enterprises. International financial reporting standards uses a different set of accounts. You can use an account called investments at fair value through profit and loss, or another account called investments at fair value through other comprehensive income. I'm keeping this video to accounting standards for private enterprises. So using the fair value valuation account is good enough. I hope you found that example to be helpful. And until next time, thanks for watching.